What happens when you put the ex OnePlus CEO, the inventor of the iPod, Teenage Engineering and Casey Neistat in one room? Nothing happens. The design of the Nothing Phone 1 is unique and polarizing. The transparent bag offers insights of things like the wireless charging coil, parts of the speaker and a lot of dotted covers. I think it's a bit of a shame that you can't see the actual tech, but I understand that circuit boards, contacts and sensors don't appeal to everyone as much as they do to me. This way the whole thing looks neat and still more exciting than an ordinary plain glass back panel. 50% of the plastics used are recycled or bio-based materials. That it's industry leading and 58 kilograms of CO2 per device equals to about 500 kilometers of driving so that's really not much. The matte angular aluminium frame is even 100% recycled and strongly reminds me of the current iPhones. The similarity cannot be denied in terms of feel in the hand either. Very striking, high quality but not super ergonomic. The coolest design element is guaranteed to be the roughly 900 tiny LEDs that make up the so-called glyph. It flashes in sync to the ringtone or when a message arrives or when you use the reverse wireless charging or as an indicator while charging. I mean it is a little bit over the top and super flashy but I like this kind of stuff and it's really cool to look at and does not drain the battery at all in my testing. The haptic feedback is provided by an x-axis vibration motor and is really high quality and there are only two things that I can seriously criticize and that is the use of Gorilla Glass 5 instead of the newer Victus and and the IP54 water protection. It's not the best, but hey, at least there is one. Every now and then, however, my eyes wander from the back to the front because the display of the phone one is equally as great to look at. 6.55 inches in size with a full HD plus resolution, OLED technology for perfect blacks and contrast as well as vivid colors. Because a competitor boycotted nothing's actual plans to install a 90Hz OLED display, we now get to enjoy 120Hz with 800 nits of typical and 1200 nits of peak brightness. My highlight are the symmetrical bezels all around. It's a rarity in this price range anyway, but also in general and I love it. If the first smartphone of a small company can deliver such a great display, why can't all the competition to it then? The Phone 1 looks like an iPhone, only better because it doesn't have a notch and just a tiny hole in the corner for the selfie camera. The fingerprint sensor is also in the display and it's optical and too far down for for my taste but it unlocks quickly and reliable. The stereo speakers sound good but lack bass at the full volume. Nothing OS 1.0 is based on Android 12 and it's relatively similar to a Google Pixel. Many fonts have been replaced by Nothing's very own font and the quick settings are a bit larger and have an overview of connected devices. The home screen has hardly any customization at all and Nothing only has four custom widgets. Only two apps are self-designed. The recorder with a really strong resemblance to the synthesizers of Teenage Engineering and the camera app. The software is nice to look at and all the important functions are there, but I got the impression that nothing was a little bit under time pressure. There are occasional stutters and longer loading times than on a cheaper Moto Edge 30 with the same processor and a similar software experience. The first few updates improved on that situation, but there's still some optimization needed, but I'm glad to announce that there will be three years of Android and four four years of security updates, so that is really quite a lot, especially in this price area. And when I mentioned the processor already, nothing opted for the Snapdragon 787G Plus instead of a 7 Gen 1 because it is manufactured by TSMC and not Samsung. I can 100% understand this decision. The performance is about 35% below current high-end chips, but the heat and power consumption is better. There's a 8 and 12 GB RAM model and 128 or 265 GB of UFS 3.1 storage. The Phone 1 runs so fast that many would only notice the difference from a more expensive device in a direct comparison. What everyone will notice though is the great battery life. The 4500 mAh could last me all day long and even more with 5.5 to 6.5 hours of screen on time. Quite a lot and more than 
high-end flagship phones right now. Charging is fast on average with 35 watts up to 50% in 30 minutes. Wireless is done with 15 watts. The dual camera has a surprisingly strong hardware. The IMX766 50 megapixel main sensor with an f1.8 aperture is also found in the Oppo Find X5 Pro. And the 50 megapixel ultra wide has a Samsung JN1 which is the same sensor than on the Xiaomi 12 and OnePlus 10 Pro. However, nothing has auto focus and macro mode. There's everything you need in the app in terms of modes and the photos are actually better than I expected, but my expectations were also quite low. After all, this is the first smartphone from a startup. The dynamic range is high, the colors neither under or over saturated. The photos look detailed and vivid. Most people wouldn't think that this is a 470 euro device. The only thing I could notice negatively is the noise behavior in the corners of the image and this is even more extreme in the ultra wide angle, which is generally less nice to look at. Blurrier and the pictures seem a little bit more dirty if you can put it that way. I like that you can activate the glyph in the camera and it brightens up for macro photos for example. The night mode is great but you have to stand still for 3 seconds. The pictures are bright and colorful but the ultra wide angle still looks a little bit over processed. The selfies are perfectly fine but nothing special. In its price range the phone one really does well and the google pixel is a bit more consistent but not double as good. Conclusion. I was afraid that the nothing phone one could be a huge disaster and a big flop for nothing but I'm glad that it is really really good and it proves one point really clearly and that is that mid-range phones don't need to be boring and I like that really much. It is cool and it is exciting and of course it's not revolutionary like they announced but I think it's fun and there's nothing wrong about fun and even though you pay a little bit extra for the design I think the price is still super fair and I'm excited to see the future of nothing.